Aloha and welcome to the 2023 Iolani Prep Basketball Classic presented by Hawaii Pacific Health. We're here on the campus of Iolani School in the lower gym at the Father Kenneth A. Bray Athletic Complex. My name is Carter Uechi and I'm joined here alongside by Coach Dean Shimamoto. Coach Dean, you excited? You ready? I'm just excited for the start of the Classic. Every time you have this time of year come around, I think Christmas is synonymous with Iolani Classic Basketball, and I'm excited as much for the girls as I am for the boys. Uh, we got so much action coming up over these next few days. It's unfortunate that it's only a few days, but it kind of ramps up also over the next week all the way into the boys' tournament in a, about two weeks away. So, yeah, I mean, to put it lightly, I'm excited. This first matchup today, game scheduled for 3.30. It'll be the Kamehameha Kapalama Warriors taking on Sidwell Friends, the Quakers coming all the way from Washington, D.C. And they won the state champions invitational last year. So they presumed and called themselves the national champs. So they come into town one and one on the year. They dropped a game on the third by one point to West Town. They come here, they came here on, on Wednesday and have been enjoying some of the festivities so far. They went to a luau yesterday. They walked right across the street from the hotel they're staying at, the Twin Fin, and jumped in the water right before this game. And there was some jellyfish there. Coach Tamika Dudley told me. I think one of her players might have gotten stung, but they're all good now, she said. And along with the Quakers from the mainland, we have Clovis West out of California, as well as Sierra Canyon. Clovis West will play the next game against Kahuku, coming from the North Shore. That game scheduled for a five o'clock tip. And we have the host, the Iolani Raiders at 6.30, taking on Kailua. And in the nightcap, the Campbell Sabres coming from Eva Beach to take on the aforementioned Sierra Canyon Trailblazers. You want to talk a little bit about who some of these guys at home or the people here can get accustomed to seeing who's on our watch list here? No, I mean, there's, there's a bunch of stars that are going to be coming up tonight for Sidwell Friends, for Clovis West. Uh, for our third mainland team, Sierra Canyon. And you're going to hear these names throughout the night, of course. Uh, but there's also a lot of studs here from the local teams. From Iolani, one of the top freshmen, not just in Hawaii, but even along the West Coast. Already with a couple offers given to her before she even played a regular season game here at Iolani School. Uh, Kamehameha, who we have coming up. Nihoa Dunn, a young star. An all-star selection last year for Kamehameha, who made a late, deep run toward the state tournament. Did a really nice job. So, you, you know, there, it's not just the mainland teams that are bringing the heat. It's the local teams as well. Some of those girls you mentioned for Sidwell, I'll get to their names now. Kendall Dudley, she's headed to UCLA next year. She'll be joined by her teammate, She'll also be on the court. Zania Soka. Both of them headed to UCLA next year to play with one of the other alums from Sidwell Friends, and that's Kiki Rice, who graduated in the class of 2022, who started all but one game for the Bruins, averaging about 12 points for them. But those two are their two of the three senior captains. The last senior is Marley Long. And she's headed to William and Mary next year. All three of these seniors for the Quakers and Coach Dudley all have signed their NLIs, getting ready to play their last year of high school basketball, but also get ready for the next level. And one of the key players that's not a senior for them is Jordan Jackson. And that's one you're gonna be hearing her name a lot this year, next year, and the year after that, the number four rated sophomore for the ESPN class of 2026, the number three guard in that class. And we will see the number one guard in that class later tonight, Jersey Robinson, 
out of Sierra Canyon. That's your point of, we just have a lot of talent here. We'll see it all today. It's Iolani Prep Basketball Classic. It's pre presented by Hawaii Pacific Health. And then we just have to recognize some of our generous tournament sponsors, those that help us put on this tournament that everyone looks forward to here on the islands. And for these mainland teams that come here, it's always one that Coach Dudley said she's been talking about it to her AD, Tony Dorado, trying to get her way down here. And here they are for the first time. But Hawaii Pacific Health, the Twin Fin, Nike, Alaka'i Executive Search, First Hawaiian Bank, and Pest Tech Hawaii. And that's just a partial list of all our sponsors and mahalo nui loa to all of them. We would not be able to put on this Iolani Prep Basketball Classic without their support. You're, yeah. on, you're on this committee. You want to talk a little bit yeah, behind no, the scenes we're really of excited. what happens? Yeah, we're really excited this year um, with Hawaii Pacific Health, who has signed on for a two-year contract to support the Iolani Classic. They are our title sponsor. And Twinfin was a big part of it last year. And we're fortunate enough to have them stick along with us and support this classic again. Of course, we do have the team staying at their hotel. And it's been rave reviews since we've moved these teams and they're waking up in the morning opening their balcony doors and looking out at the ocean and really getting that Hawaiian feel from the twin fin and so again they've stuck on this year you might have remembered the ads last year so much twin fin what is the twin fin I think by now you know what that is and the teams definitely do but Hawaii Pacific Health is such a huge presence here in Hawaii and they are making their presence known even more supporting the local community, the local sports scene, and here the basketball scene at the Yolani Prep Classic. We're just about to get our starters from Kyle Miyamoto. He's our fabulous PA announcer. We'll be doing a handful of these games with us. It looks like he's about ready. We'll send it down to him for starters. Announced now they go into their huddles. Coach Pua straight coming off a year where the regular season was five and seven. They went on a run. They started the year one and five. They ended up being 
is that eight and eight. They finished eight and eight in the ILH play. Came out of the ILH tournament, they won that. And in the playoff game between Iolani, who won the regular season and these Warriors, the Raiders won that game, got the seeded berth, went on to win states. But this Kamehameha squad, they only lost one senior last from last year's team. So it's a bunch of returnees, a bunch of key contributors all back on the court here. Yep, a lot of, lot of youth for Kamehameha. Five freshmen, five sophomores last year making that late run. So great momentum coming into this season. Now, hit a buzzer. Looks like there may have been an issue with the shot clock. Already at 12, but with nine seconds off the clock, so that doesn't quite add up to the 35 that you'll see up there now. So getting that fixed right off the bat. Again, first game of the Iolani Classic, so maybe a couple kinks to work out <laughs> while we get going here. So Dudley will inbound from right in front of us. Throw it into Soka. Going against Dunn. Layup off the glass. Rolls in. Dunn is one of the top posts in the state. One of the best big defenders on the inside. And I think another shot clock issue. Trying to get the reset right. But you saw it right off the bat. Right into Soka. Turned to her left shoulder. And finished overdone not used to playing against that size though last week they went up but quite a, against a big team did come in there huh? with some size 6'4 6 6'2 6 so a little bit familiar but not something you see regularly here in the state of Hawaii Ahsoka 6'4 headed to UCLA next year that UCLA team looks pretty tough right now Lauren Betts who else do we have on that team well, you get, you know, it's so interesting. I mean, Sidwell Friends is a team from the East Coast. And two players and one in the past, you know, moving, making that move from the East Coast all the way to the West Coast. So, you know, you can be seen, doesn't matter where you are, whether in D.C. or whether in California, and these big programs want you, no matter where you're from. But they must have done a pretty good job of convincing because they made that trek all the way across the country and gonna make UCLA home. Westwood. Now Coronado brings it across half court. Shot clock at 28 now. Done with it, top of the key. Now driving on Soka. He got into the corner. Straight man-to-man -man pressure here by Sidwell Friends. Always interesting to see in the beginning of a game how a team defends the ball screen and you saw them hedge hard and switch off of that. Soka all the way out in the perimeter. Now Soka guarding her on the baseline. Alapai has it. Top of the key. Three is long. Long rebound. Battled for and won by the Quakers. Out in front is Kendall Dudley off the glass and in. Sidwell picking up the pace right off the rebound. The long outlet all the way up the court to Dudley. And these girls, you get it to them one on one with a lot of open space, and that's a bucket. The Warriors break the press. Paranata has it in the corner. Gives it to Dunn on the post. The spinning shot in the in the paint. Good action, breaking the press and right on the inside to Dunn. If she has an advantage, that was one there over Jackson, who's not quite as big as the rest of them out there, but pretty good size herself, and Dunn able to get that to go. Jackson crossover, pull up from the elbow is good. Got herself away from Paranato. Creating enough, enough space to rise up from that elbow spot for the jumper. Teams like Sidwell, you look at the length, you see the athleticism, but it's not just that. They're skilled, they're efficient. Three for three from the field early in this game. And man, I don't know how you contend with that, but Kamehameha has just got to keep plugging along, find their holes to attack. A double for Lebanon. Gives it off to the wing for Alapai, down low for Dunn. Splits the double. Trying to track down her miss, but Soka ends up with it. Now Yoon with the ball. Trying to push the pace. Looking for Jackson on the block. She's trying to post up Alapai. She turn around jump shot is good. 
Make that 404. Now the Warriors have it in the corner. Coronado to Lebanon three. That's pure. And it's a three point game. The Warriors now trail by three, eight, five. Kwame doing a nice job of breaking the press. As much pressure and as much length that Sidwell Friends is putting out there, they're not turning the ball over. And now a turnover there, but Lebanon can't finish. Second chance here for the Warriors. Dunn has it on the wing. Thought about that three for a bit. Now picks up her dribble. Now Dunn back with it at the free throw line. Driving, stops in front of Dudley, throws up a teardrop and in. Again, another instance by the Warriors where they're staying calm in the trap, getting it out, finding opportunities, not turning it over. They're gonna have to find a way to stop them, but at least they're not giving them the easy buckets. Now Soka with an up and under to get pass done, but can't finish with the left. Warriors now down by one with a chance to take the lead here. Alapai with it. It's to Dunn on the baseline. Guarded by Soka, Dunn trips. The ball is saved by the Quakers, still in. Now Long will push, Dudley will push it up to Long. Pass goes off of a Warrior and out. Ball will stay, stay with the Quakers. Sometimes with teams as athletic as Sidwell Friends, they just wear on you. It's not about the long, quick runs. Sorry, it's not about the quick runs where they just get points and points at a time. Even if Kamehameha is able to score, they're just gonna keep coming, keep pressing, keep pushing transition, keep finding opportunities and put pressure on that defense. Dudley for three. And it falls after it spun around that rim. Maybe about five times, maybe more. We've already seen Sidwell Friends score in a variety of ways. They've got it out in transition near the rim, post up, mid-range, and then a three. Coronado from the elbow, too strong. Rebound taken by Dudley. Looking up ahead already, Jackson has it. Go up top to Dudley, guarded by Olapai. Go high post for Jackson, loses it. But right there is Soka. 13 on the shot clock now. Yoon with it. Crossover. Goes off of Alapai and out. Despite the score, Sidwell Friends being pretty efficient, finding ways to get buckets. Kamehameha hasn't given them up easily. They've found a way to stay in front, get a hand up, and sometimes it's just better offense than their defense, and you can't help those types of possessions, but they've done a good job of staying in front, doing a good job not giving it away so easily, really on both ends of the floor, offensively and defensively. Limit the turnovers, no easy buckets. They're making them work. A foul called on the long screen there. The Sidwell friends turnover. So Pumaya Nakakura now into the game, brings the ball up past half court. That foul gets called on Jada Dixon. So after no fouls in the first almost five and a half minutes, now we had two in the last 10. Yeah, something of interest being the fouls this year, a new rule in NFHS. Looking for five fouls and then immediately into the double bonus, resetting at the quarter. Nakakura with it, 15 on the shot clock. Forced to pick up her dribble and a fight and a travel call. Nakakura was stuck there. Dixon was on her, smothering her. Again, constant pressure by the Quakers. Not putting themselves out of position, going crazy for hard steals. They just stay in front, just work, work, work. Force it to be tough. Dudley for three, that misses wide. Elevator screen there for Dudley, had a clean look, but didn't get a clean catch, which may have affected that shot, and clearly 
she's much a, a much better shot shooter than that shot showed. Nakakura now with Long on her, driving, loses the handle. And that ball goes out of bounds. Turnover there for the Warriors. Warriors able to avoid those types of early turnovers. But now, you know, this is the second unit. Though Nakakura has a lot of experience coming into the game, just a little bit cold and trying to pick up this pace. But what's good about those turnovers is they're dead ball turnovers. They're not leading to runouts and easy baskets for Sidwell Friends. So even though it's a turnover, it's the best of the type. Long with the jumper, that'll bounce in. It's like about four bounces on the rim, but it'll fall. Marley Long with her first points of the game. And the Quakers are now up by six, 13-7. Minute 10 to play in the first quarter of the Iolani Prep Basketball Classic. The first game of the day. Now to Pola driving with the contact, finishes with her left. Kumura to Pola. Good action there. Started driving from the high post, off glass and in. Tupola did a great job of finding that hole, getting straight to the rim, no messing around, straight to the basket, finished great with the left hand, smooth and one. Just a four point game here with a minute to go in the first quarter. Kamehameha doing a good job, as we said, taking care of the ball, staying in front defensively, so you haven't seen that big run by Sidwell Friends. It hasn't come easy. A free throw from Tupola. She covered her mouth after that, but <laughs> <laughs> missed the rim there. It's Air called. conditioner may have <laughs> kicked on. <laughs> Just at that moment. Now Dunn checks in for her. Yoon with it, top of the key. Now Dixon driving on Paranata. Kick out. Jackson for three. Too strong. Second chance here for the Quakers. Yoon with the long rebound. Now Yoon trying to find another teammate. Now she drives. She gets it back here on the wing. Jackson, second try here. Hits the front rim and that'll bounce in. Friendly roll there for Jordan Jackson. A lot of these teams have what I call fixers. Your offense doesn't go as planned, and sometimes it goes a little ragged, and they have those people that can just fix it. And now the double forces a turnover. But when, it, as the Quakers are trying to run out into transition, Alapai was able to steal it back. And the second foul on Marley Long is called. Now 9.6 seconds left in this first frame. Paranato with the handoff to Alapai. Two seconds on the clock. Dunn didn't know. Doesn't get that shot off in time. And at the end of the first quarter, Sidwell Friends up by seven against the Kamehameha Warriors. We're gonna pause a little bit. We'll be back after this. Here's the dream. Never stop doing what you love. The choices you make now can keep the dream alive tomorrow. So you can live your life your way. We're here to help with a personalized approach to a healthier you. This is me. Hawaii Pacific Health. And we're back after that short message from Hawaii Pacific Health, the title sponsor of the Iolani Prep Basketball Classic. We'd also like to recognize more of our generous tournament sponsors, Kahala, Roberts Hawaii, Physiotherapy, Sodexo, Waiakea Water, DTL, Big Boats Incorporated, Tiki Grill and Bar, that's just a partial list of our sponsors. Mahalo nui loa to all of them. We would not be able to put on this Iolani Prep Basketball Classic without their support. The Warriors will have the ball to start this second frame. Trailing by seven, 16 to nine. Against Sidwell Friends out of Washington, D.C. 
Dunn's pass is stolen away by Dudley. Out in front of the pack. Lefty finish is a good off the glass. There you see the difference between a dead ball and a live ball turnover leads to a run out. Doesn't give Kamehameha the opportunity to get back and set their defense and make Citadel friends work. Those are the easy ones that you don't want to give up. Now Alapai splits the double, can't finish too strong off the glass. Trying to track that down was Jada Felix. Last touch by a Quaker. So the Warriors will keep possession. The constant pressure it does keep wearing. Through the first quarter, Kamehameha did a nice job of holding onto the ball. Not a lot of errant passes. Again, not a lot of live ball turnovers. And that really limited the scoring for Sidwell Friends. Didn't allow them to build that lead, make the big run. Now we're starting to see it. Two points, four points. And the lead's now from four, now up to nine. Now Jackson with it, guarded by Paranata. Yoon will pick it up after half court. Yoon still with it, Dudley. Doesn't use the screen from Dudley. We'll see Schneeberg. Off. Reverse off the glass is good. Nice move there from Gen Genesis Schneeberg. Schneeberg found her way to the baseline. Used her body well, stayed at a nice pace and able to get that off the glass with the right hand. Now Jackson trying to push the tempo, but Kenzie Olapai right there. Puts her body on the line, picks up a charge. So difficult to do in transition. Alapai found the lane and just took it away. Easy call. Sometimes not so easy, but that one was an easy one. Now 20 to nine here in the second quarter. Quaker's up by 11. Labanon with it. That her pass is stolen by Schneeberg. Out in front, running with Ka Kabuya Dow Caswell. Schneeberg puts it off glass, plus a foul. The pass is a little less crisp. You see it float, you see it die just a little bit off of that bounce pass, and Sidwell Friends is in that lane. Schneeberg read it well, just got a handout. You could tell that if she didn't get it, she wasn't out of position, and that's the type of defense you want to play where you're putting pressure, but you're not gambling. And then when she gets out in transition, that strong frame, able to stop, slow up, and get the and one. A done. This is long. Second chance here, tracked down by Paranato. No reset on the shot clock, but that pass hits the baseline. And another turnover there from the Warriors. And a carry call. Right in front of the ref and the Sidwell bench. Called on Yoon. So they turn it right back to the Warriors. First game here to open up the Iolani Classic and first game for all of these teams, especially for Sidwell Friends who came all the way from Washington DC just a couple of days ago. So it takes some time to get your feet under you when you've traveled 5,000 plus miles across the country to get here. Paranato loses the handle out of bounds. Good defense there, Ava Yoon all on top of her. A 30 second timeout called by Coach Pua Straight. We got to talk to her before the game. I asked her, what do you tell your team coming in to face a team like Sidwell Friends, the national champion of last year? She said, hard over height. <laughs> I just gotta play and see what happens, see where the ball rolls. And that first quarter it started off exactly how Coach Straight wanted it. And some turnovers here, breakaway there, and the lead is now up to 14. What all coaches understand is this is still the preseason, and your goal at the end of the season, of the season, for Hawaii basketball, for a team like Kamehameha, is to go out and win the state championship. So this is part of that process. A team like Sidwell Friends is trying to win a national championship. But in both cases, they're trying to grow. They're trying to get better no matter who they're playing, where they're playing. 
doesn't matter what part of the tournament this is, but they're all trying to improve, and that's what Coach Pua Straight, you know, I think she's still trying to look at that. No matter who you're playing, no matter what the score, are we getting better for our goal? Paranata goes down low to Dunn. She's battling with Long, off glass too strong, rebound taken by Soka. Now Yoon, looking up ahead, gets it to Dudley, back to Soka. Yoon for three. Misses off to the right, tracked down by Soka. Save to Dudley, Be nice pass down low to Long. Finishes with the right. So patient, this team. Well-timed cuts, great vision. Hitting the cutter in timing. It's no surprise they're so highly ranked and they have such a great history of success. Now Dunn battling with Long down low. And Long, that's a foul on Long. That's foul number three on Marley Long. And it is. And if they see a substitution, they might actually be waiting for her at the scorer's table already. But Dunn works her way to the free throw line. First one too strong. So as a group, as a team, you are trying to improve your teamwork, your schemes, your execution, so that you're better as you move into the regular season, qualify for the state tournament, hopefully win the state tournament. But as individuals, players like Nihua Dunn, again, don't get to go up against this kind of size, though they will see some size. And, Players like Mele Sake here at Iolani, and Iolani and Kamehameha will be among the top teams vying for an ILH title as well as, as well as a state title. So for her to go up against this type of competition, you'd like to think that it only gets easier when she only plays against the white competition. So great experience for the players and the teams. Alapai with it. Reverse kick out to Dunn. Running floater is good for Niho Dunn. She's showing some, a variety of shots. Done. once again, she's just a sophomore. That's a surprising thing. She plays like a veteran. I guess she is a veteran. <laughs> she has one year under her belt and already an all ILH selection. Lohi Candia had that block there, but turned it back over. Jackson, Euro step away from Olapai. Gets the basket there. Already up to nine points. That Again, another sophomore. Uh, Jackson made the adjustment that Dudley was not able to make. Alapai was there for the first time for Dudley to draw that charge. And you saw Jackson make that hero step a little wider and then use that soft touch for the floater. He's talking to Coach Dudley before the game, and Jackson was one of the players she highlighted in their loss to Westtown. Jackson only had three points, and she said, we're not gonna go anywhere if she's only scoring three points. And already three minutes left in the first half, Jackson has nine points, and she's showing her, showing everyone that what she can do here. Again, a part of that learning process. That's what the preseason is for. And every time you go into a new season, people step into new roles. Whether you were a non-player to now a player and a starter, or a off the bench person to a starter, or a starter to a star. And you do have to change mentality sometimes as you come out into games. You're not allowed to hide behind who you were last year with the stars and the seniors of the previous year. Now you have to be the person that steps up. And Jackson, just a sophomore, I think she understood that last year, but I think even more so that Coach Dudley's telling her, no, we need you. It's not just it's nice to have you make contributions. We need you in these moments, or this may be the result. So again, a learning experience for her in the loss. And sometimes those are more impactful. Yeah, no, I got to talk to her before the game, and we we're talking about that national championship run they went on in that state champions invitational. And she was talking about how she basically had this group last year for that state championship run. They had Jaden Donovan on the team, as well as Leah Harmon, who's now at IMG Academy. Donovan's now at Duke, but both of those players were unavailable that weekend. So it's basically them 
plus Kia Miller, who's now at East Carolina. But that whole tournament, they had to beat Centennial in the semifinal out of Nevada. And then they beat Lone Peak out of Utah for the championship. But it was these group of girls that had to do that in the state champions invitational. And they grew a whole lot in that experience there. I mean, if you look down at their roster right now, I mean, it's a number of sophomores. I mean, so clearly a lot of those players got great experiences as freshmen. So scary to think where they're gonna be, not just next year, but the following year when all these girls mature and improve and improve their games and add different aspects to it. Of course, you'll be without Sokka, you'll be without Dudley, but man. So much experience is coming. And you can tell all these other girls, they're gonna be on the list for big time colleges as well. Yoon hit that corner three. Labanon tried to answer with her corner three of her own. Sokka running the court will get called for a travel. A little too eager there. Now the lead up to 20 for the Quakers. Nakakura with it, we'll bring it across half court. Candia back to Nakakura. Done down low. Uses her body to create some space from Jackson and gets it off glass and in. A nice drop off there for the Warriors. Done able to finish. When Kamehameha has been able to share the ball work their way out of traps, find the holes to attack. They've gotten those slim opportunities, and not just that, because opportunities are one thing, but finishing them is a whole nother thing over the size and athleticism of Sidwell friends, and the Commitment Warriors have done a nice job, especially more early than late, because those holes have closed up. But I like what I'm seeing out of them, and they're gonna be tough in league and in the state. Now can deal with it. Gets it to Dunn. Dunn working on Soka. Now to Polo with it. And Jackson threw her hand in that passing lane there. Picks up yet another steal. Good defense there from Mata. But Jackson able to get that ball out of there. Soka, Yoon uses a screen from Soka. Jumper doesn't get the bounce there. Nakakura now trying to push it. Now we'll pull it back. Candia step back three. Gets the roll. And it's nice to see Lohi Candia back. Had to sit out last year, got hurt. But her sophomore year, She's honorable mention in the ILH. Now she's back healthy for her senior year. You can see what she brings with her offensive arsenal. The quick burst off the crossover, the stop, the quick step back, able to knock down a three. And this year, the shot clock, it's not a new thing to the Iolani Classic, but it is a new thing to the state of Hawaii for basketball. And with the introduction of the shot clock, you need people that can create separation. You need bucket getters. Guys that can get it late in the clock and find a way. And Candia is a welcome introduction back to this squad and that really helps. Jackson with the breakaway layup there. She gets into double figures with 11. Nakakura had a double team come at her. Yoon has broken away. They find her down at the basket. She lays it up in, in. I don't feel like Yoon has come out all that much. We've seen everyone else shuffle in and out, but Yoon stuck in there just being solid. And they're gonna get Jackson. There on the foul, call her for a block. And now Jada 
Jada Dixon will check in for Jackson. That is Jackson's second foul. And they're trying to go down low. That pass is broken up by Dudley. And that'll do it for the first half. The Warriors down by 19, 36 to 17. Our friends from Sidwell Friends in Washington, D.C. with the lead. Your first half takeaways, Coach? I really like what I've seen from both teams. I don't think this is a game at this point that Kamehameha is going to be able to win. And I don't know what the expectation was coming in, but they showed some nice execution, took care of the ball. They got some buckets on the inside with Dunn. And you saw the guards come in and work their way in. So, I, you know, I saw a lot of great things out of Kamehameha. And for me, looking at it from the perspective of are they going to be able to compete for a state title, I think after that first half, it's an absolute. That being said, Sidwell Friends, there's a reason why they're one of the top ranked teams in the country, why they've had so many, so much success over the years. The way that they execute their tempo, you never really saw them speed up. They got in, out into transition, but it was solid passes, crisp passing, strong finishes, finding their way to the rim, able to execute in the half court, knock down some jumpers, knock down some threes, cuts to the basket. They really got it every which way. Then defensively, they don't gamble, but they're able to stay in passing lanes, errant passes, they take care of them, they finish them in transition. Those are all the best pieces, all the pieces that you see in championship programs, not just championship teams, because those types of things continue from year to year. And I didn't know too much about Sidwell Friends other than what I've known them to be. You see their name always in the national rankings, especially on the girls' side, but I can see why. The Sidwell Friends team, I was looking at their schedule on their website. They started the year at the Art Turner, Art Turner Memorial at St. Paul the Six. We saw them in the boys' classic, was that three years ago or so? And then they come here for the Iolani Classic. After this, they go to Memphis, Tennessee, 901 tourney, Tournament of Champs. And then they start their league play. But in the, in the midst of all their league play, they got to Springfield, Massachusetts for the Hoop Hill Classic against Etiwanda, who won the CIF last year. They beat Archbishop Mitty, who we saw in the Classic here. They beat Sierra Canyon on their way to that championship as well. But it's just top tier teams after top tier teams here for Sidwell Friends, for Clovis West, who is warming up right now for Sierra Canyon. That's what all their schedules look like. But as a coach, what would it be like if you had a schedule like that? I wouldn't even know how to deal with that. I mean, we're just used to playing our local schedule. And again, that's our goal. But for these teams, both on the girls and the boys side, they're used to this type of travel. They know how to prepare. They know how to get their schoolwork in in between. and find days to practice at different gyms, sleeping at different hotels. It's a burden coaching-wise just to take one trip. It's difficult. It's difficult to figure out. So to be constantly on the road, I think it's one of those things that you really have to get used to. And these programs clearly are used to it. They're able to not only just exist and hang around, they're able to thrive. But man, what a program you have to have. I think a lot of people, I'm sure, contribute to that. It can't just be a one-person show. There's people that are handling traveling, travel, almost like at college. You have the operations guys taking care of where you're gonna be and when and how, figuring out how you're gonna get there, what, what and where you're gonna eat. But you do have to have that type of thing set up so that the coaches and the players can just focus on basketball and getting that done. And, here they are, 5,000 miles from their home in Washington, D.C., competing in Hawaii with the ocean right outside their door, trying to balance what should be part experience and part vacation, uh, but also part business. And that's always a tough thing. What do you do, right? Do you let them go into the water, let them get a little tired, sit in the sun that they're not used to having at this time of year? 
But if you don't, then you miss out on Hawaii. Then why come, right? So it is a tough balance for these coaches to figure out the vacation part, the business part, the travel part, the school part. And again, this is for ninth, 10th. So some kids that are 14 and 15 years old. But at the end of the day, what an experience, really, for all of these teams. Not just the local getting to play against these great teams, but also the mainland teams getting to experience Hawaii. Talking about that hotel that everyone's staying at, it's the Twin Fin, located steps from the glistening waters of Waikiki Beach. The Twin Fin opened in November of 2022, following a multi-million dollar renovation. The refreshed hotel, named after a surfboard with two fins, features updated guest rooms, ocean-inspired design, authentic experiences rooted in Hawaiian culture, and front row views overlooking the pristine south shore of Oahu. Accented with hints of mid-century modern design, the updated guest rooms and suites feature a contemporary aesthetic that celebrates the energy and attitude of modern surf culture with a playful nod to the timeless charm of surfing's past. The resort embraces Hawaii's laid back and lively spirit with an oceanfront backdrop tropical ambience, unexpected experiences, and endless opportunities to share memorable, meaningful moments. Thank you for the Twin Fin for hosting all our mainland teams coming down for the Classic. And I was able to talk to Sidwell Friends Athletic Director, John Square. Some of you guys might know that name. He was a national champ at Miami. And he was talking about this balance that I was like, what's on the schedule tomorrow? They're going to go look at and check out Pearl Harbor. Today was the walking across the street to go to the beach. Yesterday, they went to the Luau at Paradise Cove. But he said, we, I want to do all these things. But to your point, it's the schoolwork. These girls have a bunch of homework that they also have to take care of. Because once again, they're student athletes. And the student part comes for first. But he said his favorite food so far has been the Kulo pork. And Coach Tamika Dudley also agreed with that statement. <laughs> but she said they haven't been able to try much. They've had breakfast at the hotel, haven't ventured out much. They had the luau food, so the Hawaiian food there. And then they had pizza for lunch today. So not your typical food that you come down to for the islands for. But they're it's, probably going to try. It's usually the part of that mix, right? you got to eat a little bit of what you're comfortable with and then venture out and try what's known to be great in these destinations. Because as you said, you just talked about all the tournaments they're going to be in and all the tournaments they have been in, in different locations around the country. But nowhere's like Hawaii. And so if you miss out, as we said earlier, on the experiences that are unique to Hawaii, then why come out this far? Why take that long plane ride to get here if you're not going to spend the time in the water, trying the food, seeing the sites, seeing the historic sites? Because at the end of the day, these 14, 15, 16, 17, 18-year-olds, they're going to remember less about what happened in each of these games. I know they're trying to get wins. They're trying to win a national championship, maintain their ranking, beat these tough teams. But it's these experiences that they're going to have in the ocean, on the beach, in the sun, experiencing the cultures of Hawaii that they're going to remember years and years and years and years beyond their college time playing and even their playing years. They're going to remember, and they're going to remember Hawaii and what they did there and all the things they got to experience. So that's the great part and why so many teams want to come out to the Yolani Classic. So we invite three mainland girls teams per year. According to Tony Dorado, who's the head of high school basketball there at Nike, who helps get these teams here to the Yolani Classic, said we're booked out four years in advance already in the girls' side. There's so many teams that want to come and experience this, and that's, that's incredible. That's incredible. Because not only do we want to have our local teams experience the competition 
and the size and the athleticism that these mainland teams bring. But we also want these mainland teams to experience Hawaii and understand what Hawaii brings because many of them haven't been out here before. So what an exciting thing. What a great thing to have this tournament. To your point, Sidwell Friends and Sierra Canyon, this is their first appearance. Clovis West, I think this is their fourth time being here. But that's your point of expanding it to the other teams that haven't been here yet and showing the rest of the country what Hawaii's like. Olapai tries to finish with their left there to start the second half. Dudley already up ahead trying to push the pace. Jackson for three. Two strong rebound taken by Kabuya Dow Caswell. Tried to throw it up ahead, went off of Jackson's back, but right there is Olapai. Now Lebanon with it on the wing. Surveying the court. Trying to sit, trying to shake Soka. Now has Dudley on her. Drop off to Kabuya Dow De Caswell. Back out to Lebanon on the baseline. And the pass goes off a Quaker and out. Defensively, Sidwell Friends in the right place, in the right position, closing the gaps quickly. You don't see too many holes there to drive, too many windows to get a shot off. And even when you do, they close it quickly. Jackson with the block. Coming from behind of Kabuya Dow Caswell there. Just as the shot clock was expiring. Now Yoon has the ball. Dudley and Alapai switches on her. Alapai loses her footing. Now Jackson for three. That's pure. Jordan Jackson leading the way with 14. She stepped up today. On the offensive end, if they're given an opportunity, they do not waste it. You saw the efficiency that they started the game with four for four early, but if there's an open shot there for Jackson, she's knocking it down. Now Yoon has it. Arnada right on her hip. They go down low to Long. Done with the double. Forces a jump ball. Uh, stay with the Quakers. There's been some nice moments here for Kamehameha on both ends of the floor. There you see it defensively converging on the Sidwell friends. Attacker in the paint, able to get a tie up, make it difficult for them. And again, maybe not often enough to go out and win this game, but pieces that they're going to use to move forward. Again, their biggest player, Saka steps out to the perimeter, just given a small window but able to knock it down. And as a coach, that's one of those moments where you just say, well, can't stop that. Good play. Olapai driving kick out to Paranato. Now Lebanon with Jackson on her. Drives right at Jackson. And Jackson just meets her at the top, takes it away. Now pushing the pace, gives it off to Soka. Lefty finish off the glass. Over the top of Kabuya Dal Caso. Nothing Riley could have done there either. Just turning defense into offense. Perfect positioning there defensively. Grabs a rebound, and here you see it again. Perfect positioning. Just looking for the opportunity, down in control. Not phased, not too high, not too low. This team just keeps coming. So we're talking a little bit about, uh, about Sidwell, friends, schedule. There's a new schedule now for the ILH. They play, there's three teams in Division One. I. I talked to Coach Pua straight about it. They're gonna play Yolani and Punho four times each in the regular season. Thoughts on that? It's tough, all those teams are tough. And by the time you play a team a third time, much less a fourth, they know what you do. They know your sets. They know what you like. So as coaches, you really do have to be creative and versatile. done. Able to finish it off the glass. And she's the first warrior in double figures there. Pass down low to Dudley. Moves around. Kabuya Dow Kazuo and puts it off glass and in. Last action by the Warriors was their best of the day. Able to get the ball screen. 
Turn back the other way, found Dunn, uncontested. She may not have known what to do with herself there, so open, and that hasn't been the case for most of the day because Sidwell Friends is so tough and sound defensively. Again, but back-to-back -back buckets. Things that you can build on for the remainder of the season because there will be no teams in the ILH or in the state that play defense like this, or offense for that matter. Masoka down low, Dudley's wide open. Easy layup there for Kendall Dudley. That action, I saw them practicing it before the game. I got here about 2.10, and that's the first play that Coach Dudley was running. Masoka at the top, looking down for Dudley running across the, ba the baseline. And Dunn can't finish. Rebound taken by the Quakers. Jackson pushing it up ahead, stops for the three. Too strong there, Soka gets, it, gets the rebound, but throws away the pass. Candia out in front, driving on Yoon, that's blocked. There, yeah, there we see Yoon again, still in the game. I know she took a quick break, but she does so many team, so many things for the Sidwell Friends team. Handles the ball, brings it up, makes the choices on which one of these attackers needs to get the ball, but also defensively. You saw her there read the Euro step. She's seen Kendall Dudley and Jackson do it to her every day in practice, and at some point you figure out how to read that and able to get the tip, and she did a nice job there. Schneeberg down low, her shot's blocked by Tupola. But I'll stay with the Quakers, 11 on the shot clock. 50 to 22, Sidwell friends with the lead here in quarter three. Of the first game of the Iolani Prep Basketball Classic presented by Hawaii Pacific Health. Long down low, can't finish but gets the call. One of the biggest indicators of a good team or the quality of a team is the quality of your possessions, but also the control that you have within those possessions. Rarely have you seen for the whole game with the variety of players that have touched the ball, anyone be out of control. They're not falling over, off balance. The catch is on the inside, one pound dribble, get it up off the glass, reverse, front side, even in transition. Shooters are squared up. So well coached, so disciplined. And even when they're pushing the pace a little bit, you get something like that. <laughs> what do you pick to stop? Because you cannot stop everything. Alapai goes down low, gets fouled. She'll go to the line. Alapai, now a junior, has shown quite a bit of versatility throughout her entire career, even as a freshman. Able to score from the three-point range, able to get inside. You see her attack the basket there on the left side, draw a foul. Earlier she drew a charge. Just doing a little bit of everything, really understands how to play the game of basketball. And even though it seems like she's been here forever, she's still just a junior. Now Dixon with it. Now she drives, kick out to the corner. Long for three, that's all net. Marley Long headed to William and Mary next year. She's up to eight points. That was not poorly defended. A great kick right on the money, squared up. Defender there, knocks it down, in control. Now Dixon tried to finish it through the contact of Alapai. Couldn't do it. And now she pokes it away. And allows the defense to reset here.
This is just game one of the first day here at the Iolani Prep Basketball Classic presented by Hawaii Pacific Health. Our next game is scheduled to tip at five. Kuhuku versus Clovis West out of California. And then at 6.30, the host, the Iolani Raiders taking on Kailua. And the nightcap, the Campbell Sabres, the OIA champs from last year, taking on Sierra Canyon. The Trailblazers coming down from Chaxworth, California. These are your four games for today. Kabuya Doubt, Caswell shot too short. Rebound fought for, last touch by a Warrior. Kohuku traveling the farthest of the local teams coming from the north shore of Oahu. What would you say, about an hour, hour and a half? Probably, maybe an hour and a half. We have to battle the traffic Through now. traffic. That is a long drive for Hawaii people. So Kahuku again is on the north shore of Oahu. And Iolani School is, I guess you would say on the south shore, located about Five to ten minutes from Waikiki, Waikiki Beach. Candios three, too strong, but good action there between Felix and Tupola. Just couldn't finish the layup on that first try. But now Soko with it down low. Trying to battle down there, create some space, couldn't do so. Now 15 seconds left in this third frame. Felix has it, down to ten. Candia corner three. Two strong rebound taken by Schneeberg. He's pushing it up ahead. One second with the heave. Comes up a little short. At the end of three quarters, Sidwell friends 58. Kamehameha 23. We'll be back after this short message. Here's the dream. Never stop doing what you love. The choices you make now can keep the dream alive tomorrow. So you can live your life your way. We're here to help with a personalized approach to a healthier you. This is me. Hawaii Pacific Health. Back here, between quarters three and four. One of the other things I got to talk to Coach Dudley about is this mother-daughter relationship that she has, coach, mother, whatever else you want to put a title on. And she said it's been the most fun to be able to coach her daughter, Kendo, who's going to be headed to UCLA next year. But I said, do you guys ever stop talking basketball? And she says, we actually do a pretty good job at home of not <laughs> talking about basketball. And I think you can talk a little bit about this. You're coaching your sons. And what is that like, being able to coach them? I really don't understand how the dynamic works in a successful parent-child, coach-player relationship. I'm a demanding coach. I would say I'm probably a demanding father. <laughs> that <laughs> makes it not the greatest and I always have to catch myself. Most times I don't. So I like to see it when it does work, you know? And at these older ages, I think there's a greater understanding of how you need to speak to your child to get the most out of them, but still remain their parent and then find a way to have that separation. Lea Matza hits the three there. And she told me, Kendall, she's your prototypical coach's kid, always wants to do the small things, trying to get the most playing time because she knows the standards against her are also the highest at the same time. So I know your, your, your boys are younger than that, but you probably hold them to quit <laughs> those high standards too. At that youthful age, you really just want your kids to compete and not give up too much. I mean, they're going to make tons and tons of mistakes, but you try to keep it as even as you can for your child as well as the rest of the team. 
And it's hard to manage. And so it's nice to have, especially if you're the coach of your own child, have your child be the one that works really hard and tries to do all the little things. Because then it's kind of hypocritical, right? If you're asking the other players doing it and, and your child doesn't do it. So that's a tough dynamic to manage. So I really commend any of the coaches that are able to maintain that relationship and make it work and be successful with it. Now Yoon able to dribble out of that double team there. Being hounded by Ferreira Taralbo right now. A collision there. They ran an elevator screen for a shooter coming out. Kabuya Dao Caswell just pushed her way right through it. I mean, in a certain case, that saves a three. And for the quality of shooter that Jackson is, maybe you do want to take that foul, get it out of bounds, and live to fight another day. Now Dudley with the double team in the corner, able to throw it over the top of that double. Hill can't finish with the left. The Warriors come away with the rebound there. That's also something Hawaii teams aren't used to. You double a girl in the corner, most of the time, they can't just look over the top and pass out of that. And there's a runner there from Lea Mata. Back-to-back -back buckets from Mata, knocked down the three earlier and then found her way to the rim with the floater. Come in, we're seeing put a little bit more pressure coming out and trapping to end that last quarter. They did it full court off a of transition, and I think that's something they're trying to add to their arsenal. Not so much of a trapping, high-pressure team last year, but this year they're going to have to find ways. Iolani, one of the better teams. Punahou, one of the better teams. And as you said, they're going to play each other multiple times a season. And any easy baskets that you can generate, whether it's off your defense or out in transition, they're more than welcome. We're going to see four subs come onto the court. Three for the Warriors and one for Sidwell Friends, and that includes Romy Ugel. One of the sophomores on this Quaker squad. Alapai driving. Kick out to Mata. Her shot comes up short. Nice pass there from Malapai. Dudley now driving, too strong off the glass. Jackson battling for an offensive rebound, gets called for a push. Mackenzie Alapai made the hard attack on the offensive end, a nice drop pass, and Mata not able to convert, floated that floater just a bit too much. But Alapai converting back defensively, trying to guard D Dudley in transition, which is no easy thing to do. Managed to make her miss, though. Again, just stay in front. Make it difficult. Make it as difficult as possible. Now Paranata gets called for the travel there. He's expecting contact there. Picked up the dribble. Got called for steps. Again, things that are not working today against a team like Sidwell Friends have a better chance at working against Hawaii competition. Now Soka able to finish through the contact. A chance for a three-point play. Soka knocked down a three earlier, found her teammates on assist, cutting to the basket. Filled lanes in transition, finished on the left. That time grabbed it at the high post. Hard drive to the right side and one. You can see what UCLA liked about her. Three ball there from Avery Owan. And now Yoon quickly driving, can't finish that layup. Now Paranata pushing the pace there. It's Mata on the baseline. Go to Dunn, pass too hot. Right there is Owen. Now Alapai with it, driving on Soka. Kick out to Paranata. Alapai corner three, that's good. Bit more assertiveness out of the Warriors. 
on the defensive end, coming out and pressuring, doubling, recovering, switching, and then on the offensive end, attacking the basket, finding the kickouts, changing sides of the floor, making it more difficult to cover for the Sidwell Friends team. And then most importantly, knocking down those shots once they do get those chances. Now Dudley with it. Drives past Alapai, finishes with the left, all in one motion. She's up to 17. Mata, after that pass, was wide open and finishes that. Out on the perimeter, again, that aggression. The hard cut, the perfect pass. Finding some offensive flow are these Warriors. Now Dunn tracks down that rebound. Alapaya pushing it up ahead. Mata has it on the wing, driving with her left. Off glass, gets fouled. She'll go to the line for two. Warriors look like they just the started the game again. <laughs> they found all this energy once again here to start this fourth quarter with all that pressure you're talking about, hitting the threes. Finding their stride, you know, almost literally getting up the floor, spacing wide, attacking the basket. If it's there, getting up like Mata was able to do, getting to the rim, drawing a foul. Otherwise, kicking it out. We got Alapai from the corner. It's nice to see this tempo, and you feel like Kamehameha has played nearly their entire bench. So if they're able to pressure, stretch out teams, and maybe make attempts at tiring them out, especially using their entire bench, they might be onto something, despite having you know, maybe an inside advantage with a player like Dunn. But again, any extra point, any ways to get easy baskets is more than welcome for any team. Doesn't matter who you are. Nakakura tried to get it to Mata. She couldn't handle the pass. Stolen away by Labanon. Uh, pushing it back at the Quakers and the pass goes through the hands of Dunn. Little too much heat on that. Dunn was open out in the short corner. But that pass fired straight through her hands. Now Yoon has it, guarded by, by Labanon. Mata, make that all up high, almost stole that away. It was all out of bounds, last touched by all up high. Now Long with it, top of the key. Drops it off to she Schneeberg. So for Sidwell friends, two minutes left in about a 30 point game roughly. And you're still seeing key players like Long and Yoon. Dudley had just come out, Yoon's still in, Sokka just came out. And why would you want to do that, right? In a game that may be decided. Again, they've come 5,000 miles. Their time is off. They need to get their legs moving and get back into game mode and game playing mode because tomorrow night it's a possible matchup with Clovis West. So they can't just afford to rest players and not let them find their flow and get used to the stamina and get used to the air and playing in this environment. That's why you'll see them late into games. It's not really a risk of an injury. It's more of a... Get the legs under them. Yeah, have a way to really get them conditioned and acclimated to the environment. Timeout called there. As a double team came, Sidwell Friends up 68 to 37 over these Kamehameha Warriors, the ILH second seed. Talked about their run earlier. They started the year one and five. They fought their way all the way back, finished ILH play eight and eight after all the ILH tournament games, a playoff game with the Raiders. Warriors, they made a run for it in states as well. Finishing third. They fell to Konawaina in the semis. 
by just six points. Konawaina, another one of those teams that returns a bunch of talent. Another one of those teams that you expect to be there at the end. Absolutely. I mean, after the early games here, it really looks like Iolani and Konawaina are the top two teams. But Kamehameha is not a team that's far behind. Nor is a team like Campbell, who was also in the semifinals, played Iolani in the semifinals of the state, cha of state tournament last year. The last two years, actually. Yeah, re again, really good squads that we're going to see here, not just at the Classic, but they'll continue to play deep into the postseason. But this is where it starts. You also have Kahuku and Kailua. Both made it to States this past year, but lost in the first round. But again, we just have a bunch of talent here in the Classic. Nakakura driving baseline, too short. We've gone fought for, but taken by the Quakers. Now Jada Felix will check in. Out goes Lebanon. In comes Malika Hill. And Delaney Hughes for the Quakers. This is part of that press package that you're seeing, a 2-2-1. I think they'll mix that up as you see the season go along. And as games go along, just to change it up, find different ways to pressure. Now Dixon driving onto Pola, splits the double. Finishes through the contact. On the floor for the Warriors. We don't have her in our scorebook, but that is, I believe, Kamaka Fonoti, number 31. That Another big body. In addition to Dunn. Dunn, Fonoti, and Tupolo, they're three bigs that Coach Strait's going to rely on this year. I think you could add Alapai to that mix. She's so versatile inside, outside. But we've said it before, some nice pieces here for this Kamehameha Warrior team. From around the state, whether you're Kona, whether you're Iolani, whether you're Campbell, or anyone else vying for a state title. This is not going to be a fun team to play against at all. And once again, how many seniors does this squad have? They only again, have one. Yeah, you mentioned it. And similar to Konawaina. A lot of youth. Now to Pola. Drops it off to Fonoti. Finishes off glass. Gets into the scorebook there. Now Dixon with it. Trying to finish around to Polo. Can't do it. Hughes comes away with the rebound. But her pass is intercepted by Mata. To Polo for three. That's blocked. And that'll do it. Sidwell Friends takes the first game of the Iolani Prep Basketball Classic over the Kamehameha Warriors. 70 to 40. I don't know if you expected this, but because First Hawaiian Bank is a sponsor, we're gonna present a Most Valuable Player Award for each game. And who would you give that award to? I'm gonna go with Jordan Jackson. Fortunately, she made it easy on me for the First Hawaiian Bank Player of the Game out of Sidwell Friends. Jordan Jackson, one of the top sophomores in the country and more than proved it here tonight. And having been a coach, spent a lot of times on the sideline, it's not just about her skill and her ability to get buckets. It's how she got it, the control that she plays with, how she commits on the defensive end, is positioned right, plays with great speed, with great tempo and great control. She has a total game, and she's a three-level scorer. She's a two-way player. You want to, everything that you want to put into that, and if you're in build a player mode, that is Jordan Jackson. And you mentioned it from Coach Dudley, where they didn't get the production they wanted out of her in their lone loss. 
this season, and they definitely got it tonight, and they're going to need it tomorrow night and the night after if they're fortunate enough to make it all the way to the championship because she is such a force. Jackson at 18, Dudley with 17, Soka with 10. For the Warriors, Nihoa Dunn, 11 points to lead the way. Mata with seven off the bench. Those Warriors, they played tough. The game, it felt closer than that 70 to 40 scoreline that we saw. And now on the court, you're seeing our next game, the Kuhuku Red Raiders getting ready to take on Clovis West, traveling all the way from Los Angeles. That game scheduled to tip in about 15 minutes or so. That'll be on a separate stream. So after this game ends and we stop talking, go back to our YouTube page. There will be a new link to click on. That'll be the next game. But for now, thank you, Coach Dean Shimamoto, Carter Wetchy here on the call. Thank you guys for listening to us. Stay tuned for the next game of the 2023 Iolani Prep Basketball Classic presented by Hawaii Pacific Health. Aloha. <laughs>